Now let's head down the Mississippi River to find a new point of interest in this great city, Fort Snelling. Here you'll feel like you've stepped back in time as we discover the historical significance of this important landmark. My name is Matthew Cassidy. I'm the program specialist for Historic Fort Snelling, and we're here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. This place, this region, has been very important to people for thousands of years. We're at the junction of the Minnesota and the Mississippi Rivers. It was during the War of 1812 that the U.S. government realized just how important and useful this region could be. Many crucial battles were being fought in the area, and at the end of the war, the U.S. decided it needed to fortify the region along the Mississippi River. Because the Mississippi cuts through North America, it's the major route to the Gulf of Mexico. The U.S. Army and government realizes this place needs to be secured. Also, for economic reasons, the Dakota and the Ojibwe, who had been living here for centuries before, had economic ties with Great Britain. The United States is really eager to capitalize on those economic ties and encourage the American Indians living in this region to trade with the United States and not Great Britain. Construction of Fort Snelling began in 1819, and over the next few years, it became a foothold of U.S. expansionism in the region that eventually became Minnesota. The fort was originally named Fort St. Anthony because of the St. Anthony Falls just up the river. However, Colonel Josiah Snelling, who led the construction of the fort, was given such praise for creating such an imposing structure that it was renamed in his honor. Now, even though this was an impressive fort, you may be surprised to know that there were no battles fought during this fort's entire history. The fort was active between 1819, when the first soldiers arrived here to begin construction on the fort, up to 1946, with the exception of three years between 1858, when Minnesota became a state and the U.S. government felt the fort was not useful anymore, and 1861, which was the year the American Civil War began. That's when the fort was reopened, and then it stayed open until after World War II. We have infantry demonstrations where costume guides dressed as soldiers march and demonstrate loading and firing of muskets. We have guests to come out, participate in close order drill with them. We also fire off six pounder cannon every day. So that's an important part of the fort's history as well, talking about what was it like for the soldiers and their families that were living here during the 1800s. Fort Snelling also played an important role in one of the most notorious Supreme Court cases in U.S. history. You can also learn about the history of slavery in Minnesota. Most people don't realize that slavery existed in the North, and Minnesota was no exception. Dred Scott and his wife Harriet, two of America's probably most famous enslaved people, lived here at Fort Snelling from 1836 to 1840, and used part of their time here at the fort as evidence in their great Supreme Court case to try to fight for their freedom. That landmark case was Dred Scott versus Sanford, also known as the Dred Scott decision, and it resulted in the Supreme Court determining that people of African descent brought into the U.S. and held as slaves were not protected by the Constitution and were not U.S. citizens. Thankfully, the U.S. government righted that wrong with the passing of the 14th Amendment, which overruled that decision. If you love history, then Fort Snelling is really a place you need to go because so much of American history from the 19th century connects here. Everything from expansionism and imperialism of the U.S. government to U.S. government, American Indian relations, to the Civil War, history of slavery in our country, all of these themes really connect right here to Fort Snelling, and it's a really important place, not just to Minnesota, but to the United States as a whole.